Hi, welcome back. Uh, last time I was talking about my new spindle that I've got for my CNC machine, but um, since then I thought that this would actually solve a couple of other problems that I've got. I can turn it into a high-speed spindle for my mill, um, and I could also use it as a tool post grinder on the on the lathe. Um, so today I'm going to cast a clamp to hold the motor, and another clamp which will go around the collar of the spindle on the mill so that I can attach it to the mill. Now the, the clamp that's going to attach this to the CNC will also attach to the mill um, attachment uh, and I'll also put a, a feature on it so that I can clamp it in a tool post. Um, so let's get started. These are the patterns that I'm going to be using. So this is the main uh, casting to hold the, the, the new spindle. Um, there's a lot of draft on it that's to make it easy to get out of the sand although I have messed up on this one and I've got the um, uh, taper on the hole the wrong way round so I'm going to ignore that for the moment the other one is the clamp that will go around the mill so the mill spindle will go in here and then this comes up the side and that will bolt onto it and then I can use the quill on the mill to move it up and down um, and I've got high speed spindle so I hadn't intended to do an open mould casting for these. I had intended to do a, a normal split mould, uh, closed casting, but when I fit, put them into the flask, I promptly realised they were far too big um, and there was no way that was going to work. So I went ahead with this method. Uh, now the mill uh, spindle casting had a nice flat face, so I was able to put that down first and get that all rammed in. The spindle clamp for the, the CNC uh, had two flanges on it so I had to get a little bit creative with that so what I did was I offered it up and found a position where it would fit scraped out the, uh, the sand so I could get it all the way down to the bottom and ram that one in Ramming up the sand is sort of quite a hands-on process. You've got to, you know, push it in with your fingers and make sure that it feels right. Um, I'm no expert, so I'm just making it up to go along, really. I didn't leave a lot of room, as you can see by the corner of that um, spindle clamp, so I had to use a metal bar just to tamp everything down. Finish off by giving everything a good whack and then scraping off with a metal bar just to give a nice flat surface. This is the bottom of the mould, by the way. I'll be flipping it over in just a second. Now, because this is very thin where the um, uh, the mill clamp is coming up to the, the sand there, I'm going to put a piece of wood over this so that when I turn it over, it doesn't fall out because it may not be very well held. Moulds can get a bit heavy uh, once they're full of sand. Uh, it's, this one is a probably you know about the comfortable limit of what I can do um, uh, because this mold uh, pattern wasn't uh, optimized for this uh, open mold approach I had to do a bit of digging to reveal it like that uh, but that worked out okay uh, one drawback of 3d printed uh, patterns is that if you don't sand them down very much you know well enough uh, which I didn't uh, the layer lines can snag on the sand. So when you um, kind of pull them out like this, there's a bit of a breakout as it pulls out. Now there's a breakout in the base of the pattern there, so I had to shove it back in, give it a good push down and a wiggle, and then try again. It wasn't so bad that time, so I just decided to tidy up with my finger. Right, so I've decided to use this piece of pipe um, to do the core of the aluminium. Um, this is steel, stainless steel, um, and the aluminium may well stick to it, but I'm hoping that when it shrinks, um, this will come away. If not, I'll just have to to bore it out. So I then pulled out the spindle, the mill spindle clamp, uh, which came out quite cleanly. Just a tiny bit of touching up there. I then I then went to carve out the pouring basins. This is so you can pour the aluminium and then it'll run down in a fairly controlled manner into the uh, 
into the cavity. Now, as you'll see shortly, these were not deep enough. The slight incline on my patio, where this was sat down, uh, was enough to allow the aluminium to not go um, over into the cavity. The furnace is on. Let's go and pour some metal. So I've got the mould in position, ready to go. I've got my um, crucible um, strap clamp thing ready to go. I've got buntings on a oven shell thing to keep it off the ground so that when I've got some leftover aluminium I can make some little ingots. Uh, there's some spare aluminium there. I've got a little bit of copper wire to throw into the mix because that makes it more machinable I think. Um, that's my dross scraper, so I'll scrape off any dross and just chuck it in this metal tray. See how the melt's going. So normally this is the exciting bit because um, you know if you've got a closed mould and you've poured it you don't know what it looks like but these are so simple and they're open open moulds that we can see that we've essentially been successful. Um, let's get them out and see what the, the bits we can't see look like. quite hot but looking good we'll let that cool down we'll see if we can bash out that steel tube all right let's see if we can get this tube out okay, so I've ground the end of this um, tube um, so that I can get the hacksaw blade in there Alright, so two castings. This one has come out a lot nicer just generally surface finish wise. There's still a little bit of um, bubbles and stuff, but I mean, to be fair, you know, being poured open is to be expected. But I'm quite pleased with that one. This one, I mean, it's kind of grotty inside, a bit hard to catch that, but there's sort of bubbles and pitting and stuff. But I have got five millimeters to take off all round. Um, to, to take it to size so I'm hoping that will clean up quite nicely um, the outside again is pretty grotty um, I think a lot of that is just the mould wasn't very good loose sand and so on uh, but again there's a lot of draft on this so 
there'll be a fair bit to um, tidy up. Unfortunately, the <laughs> the better looking bit is the top bit with the most material, and the worst looking bit is the bottom bit. But there we go. I'm just going to machine the main spindle bracket. Um, this face is sort of notionally flat, so that's the one that I've put up against the fixed jaw. I've got a bar in here to clamp against this face, which is not flat because um, I bandsawed that. Well, one finished casting um, didn't actually manage to get completely get rid of the porosity in this section not quite sure what happened there but um, the pore wasn't exactly textbook so I think that probably doesn't help um, but otherwise fairly pleased with that um, the spindle is a snug fit when you tighten it up it clamps really nicely so I'm going to fit that to the CNC the inverter wired up and uh, go from there. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.